Okay, so in this vid, I think, you know, actually, I've done I've done quite a lot of Gauntlet's guides, but, you know, there's always more to, to learn, I guess. And I think in this video, I'm going to be talking about just some, just some, like, small things that if you do them, like, it's going to improve your Gauntlet gameplay a lot. So I'll go over those things, right? And then, I mean, if, like, there's, there's more time, I feel like, I, you know, I haven't gone over enough. I'll, uh, I'll play some experimental games on Gauntlet and... And we'll just see how it goes. But anyway, first thing I want to talk about, right, is just be aware on corners of what is jumpable. Now, it's it's weird, okay? And I'm not even too sure about this myself, but you'll see that if I put jump reaction on this bot, he can't he can't jump out of side light nair. But side light nair is jumpable in game. I don't know how that works, I don't know why that works, but it is. Um, it's actually jumpable. So you need like you need to be watching out for if people are jumping out of that. And if they are, the simple solution is recovery. Like, you know, it's it's obvious. But at the same time, like, is damage reset on? It's not on. I was just wondering what's happening there. Like, I don't know. It's just, uh, you need to be careful of what's jumpable. There's also other jumpable things, uh, such as D-Light uh, into Nair. That is jumpable. And the bot even will jump out of it. Um, I'm not sure what goes on, like, with, with side like Nair not being jumpable by a bot. But this D-Light into chase dodge nair which is used for a lot of reads actually um he's jumpable I'll, I'll try and show that off now uh bots are, are weird but it is at cer i mean i guess maybe the bot can't jump out of this uh, okay he can but um at certain heights and at certain damages it's not like when they're out of very low damage if you hit it high up like if you hit the dare you know really high which i can't do because he's grounded then it, i guess maybe there like that um then you can hit it, but you'll know when you hit a high dare compared to like a low dare. Like this would be a low one compared to like, I guess if I do that, oh, he jumps. <laughs> I forgot I had jump reaction on. Um, such the, but like this will be a, you know, that's a high nair. So that will catch nairs at really low healths. Um, so be aware of that. Uh, be aware of really just, just jumpable strings. And you'll see that like the ideal down dodge read, do, it includes this string. And it's jumpable. So, you know, you have to kind of switch up your, your, um, your, like, dodge reads, I guess. Because, you know, if they start jumping out of it, then you don't really get too much of a punish off. But then, obviously, you can start doing stuff like, stuff like this. Uh, I can't hit it. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not giving a good impression. But you can start doing stuff like this, which isn't jumpable. And, uh, yeah. I have loads of Gauntlet's guides, by the way. I'll, I'll leave an, uh, a card in the top right about, like, I'll, I'll put all my Gauntlet's guides and stuff. Um, where I go over like a lot of combos and a lot of reads and yeah, uh, just just in case you know you haven't seen them already. But anyway, onto onto the second thing. Okay, so the second thing I want to talk about is overextending off stage. Now on Gorn, it's very easy to want to do this, right? Oh, I just missed it on the bot. But like even then, you, the bot escaped it, and that's kind of the point I'm trying to show is you know on Gorn, it's it's nice to go for these like ground pound into nares into ground pound into nares or even just you know. Something like this. Like, you want to go for it. But at the same time, all the opponent has to do is not jump. If the opponent doesn't jump, you don't get any of this. Like, none of it. Like, none of it's guaranteed at all. Um, I'll try and show it off. I don't really know if he can because I think the bot will always jump. Okay, so there. He falls. And I'll show you. I mean, he's kind of low health. But, like, there he jumped into, into the ground pump. But if they don't jump... A ground pound is so easy to punish. Like, you're in a lot of end lag, first of all. So if you miss it too low, you'll just die due to not being able to get out of the ground pound in time. Like, Scythe, you know, like, it kind of stops you as well. But Gornets, you'll just go straight into... You just just go straight to small brawl hell. Like, you, you're off. You are off. So, you know, be careful of holding it for too long. And just all in all, just overextending. Like, this is... And this kind of leads into... I mean, my fourth point. But I guess I'll make it the next point. Um, but, yeah, I'll get I'll get into that. But, like, there isn't many follow-ups at all on Gauntlet if they fall. Like, if they fall without jumping, if you go for a dare, it's not going to hit. If you go for a ground pound, it's not going to hit. If you go for a second there, it's not going to hit. All those things only work if they jump into it. Like, it will be your opponent's fault if they get hit by it. And, I mean, I guess that can be sad for literally everything in Brawl, but... You know, when you're jumping into things like five times in a row, like, it's especially your fault. 
Um, but the next point I was going to make is, and it's a, it's a very obvious, obvious point, is you really need to focus not only on dodges, and, you know, if you need to know the dodge reads and stuff, like I just said, I have a guide on it, but you need to, as well, focus on jumps. Like, you see that, right? I did that, sir. That's pretty safe to go for. Um, when you're trying to... So, like, basically, at the start of a game, what you'll want to do is to get your opponent off stage like this, and then, after that nair, don't go for anything. If it's the first one of the game, don't go for anything. See what your opponent does instead. You see that... Um, say this as it is my actual opponent in game. I'll see he jumped, right? So I'll be like, okay, he jumps instantly after moves. So then next time, I'm going to go for it. And he's going to jump again. And I'm going to go for it. And like that's when you can kind of go for it. Like, when you see your opponent is just jumping, you can be like, okay, I'm going to go for it because they're going to jump. Like, it's a read at the end of the day. Like Even though it's not a dodge read, it's still a read. You see he jumps there. But a sir is pretty safe to go, like, go for. Because even if they avoid the sir... You know, by not jumping. You see, if he'd have fallen there, the sir would have missed. But I haven't wasted any jumps. You know, all I've done is a sir. I haven't wasted a dodge. I'm not stuck in loads of end lag from ground pounding. The sir will actually, like, hit away from him. So it's even harder to punish. It's, it's probably impossible to punish, if I'm being honest. So, you know, it's definitely not, not bad to go for the sir. If you hit it, good. If you don't, you're not going to get punished for it. And, you know, after... You know, whether they do jump, whether they don't, and you miss, just look. Be like, did they jump there? And if they did, next time, obviously, you can go for things like this and, you know, get loads of stuff because you see that they're jumping. And it's just like something you really have to pay attention to in Warlands because it is a read heavy weapon. Like, there's a lot of true combos on this weapon, but it's, it's very read heavy. Um, my next point is, and this is a really, really specific one, but if you don't have a GC off of Nair, um, for whatever reason, if you hit a nair and you don't have a GC, say you've already used it, or say, for example, you've like done a chase dodge to to, to get the nair. So I don't have a I don't have a what's it called a, a gravity cancel there, um, like this, and I hit it. Like I don't have a gravity cancel, so I can't do this, which is optimal, right? If they don't have a dodge, if they don't have a dodge, and you don't either, so you don't have a GC, what you should go for is a X pivot dare. And it's kind of hard to do one of these, but um, I'll go for it actually, just because I, I feel like I should. Because I have, I don't think I've, on the channel ever I've gone, I've gone through this. So, and it's also used on a lot of reads. Um, I'll try and show you now if they dodge up and in, up and up and right, up up and right. Hello, that's jump reaction. Okay, <laughs> it's a bit late. It's 5:06 a.m. So, bear with me. Up and right. Where is it? Okay, there we go. Um, actually, no, it's off an end light. Like this, you need to be able to do it to, to, to catch things like that. So, yeah, be aware of um, X Pivot D lights or dare, sorry. And I'll go over them now. But basically, you know, it's needed, it's necessary for things like that. And also, off the edge of the stage like this, it kind of gives you like a massive boost. Like it's pretty unreactable and it covers a lot of space and obviously has a lot of active frames. And at the same time, you touch the wall too, so you're pretty safe and you don't fall off stage like if I do a D light here. I'm basically dead at that point. But how you do it is you do dash jump, okay? And then... So, I mean, I'm sure if you play Gauntlets, most people can dash jump there. Like this. But all you need to do is you need to dash jump. And instead of pressing uh, your attack button, you know, straight away during the dash jump. And holding down. So you'll be holding down, okay? I'm going to go for it even more specifically. You'll be holding down. And then you press dash. And then you press jump. Keep your finger on down. But then, as soon as you've pressed jump, like, the instant you press jump, your finger will still be on down. Move your finger as well to be on left. Or, or, you know, back. So you'll be holding down here, you'll do the dash jump, and as soon as the jump comes out, keep your finger on down, but also hold back, and then attack. And you'll do it. Um, if you want to do a fast fall one, you have to, like, let go of down, press down again, and then hold back, and then press, like, attack. So I mean it's quite it's quite awkward, but you, you'll uh, you'll get used to it. But this fast fall one is uh <laughs> you know it's tricky to get used to. You're like you see there, even I mess up sometimes, but it's pretty good. It's pretty good to know on on uh, gauntlets. But um yeah, this is what I was uh, getting onto. If you don't have a dodge, so you can't do a GCD light off of a, off of there. Of what you want to do is chase dodge. Okay, I'll slow it down so you can see what I'm doing. You hit the there. 
you chase dodge uh, uh, like towards them, right? And then you turn around and do the D light. Like, as soon as this chase dodge comes out, like the instant you chase dodge forward, you hold down and back and press attack. And then you'll do this like X pivot D light. And then obviously, um, off that, what would come next is jumpable. This is jumpable, which like I've already been over. However, I mean, actually, at low health, I don't think it is because you hit the the dare, sorry, really high. So I don't think it actually is. Uh, we'll try it. We'll, we'll see. We can hit it here. Like this. Okay, it is. It is jumpable. But if they jump, and this is another thing. Uh, I only expected to go over like a few things, but like loads of things are leading into other things. And I don't know. I play a lot of gauntlets, so like I just know this stuff. Uh, I kind of want to mention it. Is if they do jump, you can do a chase dodge recovery instead of a chase dodge nair. Um, and that will always catch if they jump. And then, obviously, you're free to hit a nair or a jump dare or something uh, like this. Oh, I mean, he's too low to hit it there. But if I do this and this, and then I can do a dare. Oh, maybe not. Uh, you can only do that at higher health where they get hit a bit higher. Um, but, yeah. So, you can hit recovery there if they are jumping out of the nairs. And like I said, you'll, be no you'll, like, you'll know if they're jumping or not because you'll be focused on it. I mean, you should be, anyway, you know, if you're listening to Larkan and you're taking my advice, then you will be. Double recoveries are a thing too. Never forget about double recoveries. Um, you know what, actually, we just, we're just going through stuff. We, I got so many points. Okay, let's, let's set him to, uh, what should we set him to, 100? Will this work? Yeah, okay. So, after a recovery, it's quite risky, but... You can do a chase dodge into another recovery. Um, you'll have to look at the way they move after getting hit by a recovery. If they don't move, then just straight chase dodge straight up and go for another one. But if they do move and they move away, what you'll need to do is chase dodge like this and then go for it. Or chase dodge like this and, and then just kind of like turn around and do it. It just depends on how far they move. Like a lot of it is kind of luck. But if you hit it, like, you kill extremely early. Uh, earlier than this, even. I mean, probably not 70. That's pushing it a bit, but... 80, probably. So, I mean, it's extremely... Yeah, it's 80 health. I know it's small Brawl Haven, but... He's in, he's in yellow. Like, <laughs> it's insane. Um, keep that in mind. Last thing I want to talk about, then. I think I'll just get into one game, maybe. Try and hit some stuff on Gornets. It's just lab the weapon. Gauntlets are one of the trickiest weapons when it comes to inputs. Like, you saw me doing this read, um, the up and, up and in dodge on, um, off an end light. Like, I just messed it up there. And I played a lot of gauntlets. Like, this weapon, very tight strings, very, you know, hard combos that require a lot of, like, different button, button impresses. It... I tried saying inputs and presses at the same time when I said impresses. That's pretty bad. But, <laughs> yeah, like, it's just a lot of the reads are hard. And a lot of just the normal inputs are hard. Like, some people might not even be able to hit, like, you know, uh, a GC D light, nah, there, true. Or especially GC D light, nah, recovery. See, even I just messed up. Like, it's a hard weapon. It is definitely a hard weapon. Um, I think there's another thing, too. Oh, yeah, I have a guide on this, actually, and I'll just leave my guide's playlist down below. Uh, not down below, but it'll be an end card. It'll be in the top right, and it'll be at the end of the video, too. Uh, my guide's playlist, which you can check out, and I have a lot of Gorn's guides. But Grounded D-Light Recovery is also true. Very tricky input, though. Extremely tricky input. But if you get it down, you know, you're, you're pretty sorted on Gorn's. Also, probably the hard... Actually, no, D... 100% the hardest input in the entire game. Uh, grounded D-Light now. I don't lab it, so I'm not very good at doing it. But you see, I did it there. Extremely hard input. I do have a guide on that as well. I, I just, I have a lot of corners guides, okay? Don't don't judge me. But anyway, that's what I've got to talk about for the tips. And I think we should, uh, should get into a game. After a pretty long wait in experimental key, we come across this Nash on a map with a ceiling, of course. Three, two, Probably the one, worst one. map for me being able to show off Gauntlet's things, but you know. We'll, uh, we'll see. I don't really want Spear, so I'm going to throw it away. Let him get a weapon, because uh, he's that ME. Alright, and let's see what we can do. Uh, spear into Gauntlet's is a very bad matchup, by the way. Um, so, it's not going to be the best of games, I think. We're seeing th this up and in dodge, though. Like, 
very often so far. See if we can catch it here. Okay. Up. So when people dodge up a lot, it kind of it kind of like tells you that they'll jump a lot too, because they it just shows that they like going up, right? Like it, that, that probably makes sense. Um, you see that another dodge up, so we'll go for a lot of jump reads. Oh, as yes, as we use the ceiling to our advantage, um, and see what we can do. Oh, I can't. I mean, you know, it's very clear here that he he enjoys jumping. Um, oh wait, this isn't good. There we go. Jump. He did, but didn't catch it. And if he jumps there, he's dead. No, he didn't. Of course not. Wait for his recovery and his dodge, and there we go. See, being patient like that pays off a lot sometimes because if I'd have gone down there straight away with like a ground pound or something, his recovery would have destroyed me. But you know, fortunately, I waited it out. Oh, just like he waited out my weapon for a bit. Okay. Dodge down there. It's kind of weird. Dodged up there. So now we got easy damage. None of this is avoidable. Oh, we got some more damage coming. I, I kind of just wanted to go off a bit. So I, I, I overextended a little bit there, but it's fine. It's fine. Um, boom. Jump. Should be able to get a chase dodge here. I, didn't, I, I just didn't press my dodge button. I just... I kind of... I focus on the fact that I had a chase dodge too much to the point where I forgot to actually chase dodge. It's a bit of a, bit, bit of a, bit of a dumb moment, but... Okay, he didn't dodge there, so he just got hit by the weapon pro. That was a chase dodge diagonal towards him into a weapon pro, by the way. If you didn't know what I just did there, uh, that is that is what I just did. Jump? No. Okay, he's kind of stopped jumping now. I think he's like caught on to the fact that you know I'm reading his jump, so he's not doing it as often. Um... As we get completely dominated by Spear, because it's a balanced weapon. Remember that. Spear is balanced. Okay, anyway. I thought he'd dodge up and in there. Oh, we didn't touch the wall. We Yeah, we didn't. Okay. Going to be a close game then, I guess. But just means I get to show off some more things. If I do get to show off some more things. Because we've kind of been put on Spear here. So, we might not be able to. Going to just dodge up, because it's... A bit more safe against this weapon. Ooh. Okay. Boom. Boom. I'm trying to... You know, I'm supposed to be showing off gauntlets and I'm showing off an arm. Like, it's technically gauntlets. Like, it's the same thing, but, you know. Down. He didn't. And now I just threw my weapon away. I do that way too much on gauntlets. It's something you shouldn't do. Like, throwing your weapon on gauntlets is a good way to increase, the, obviously, the range of the weapon. Because, you know, gauntlets has pretty bad... I was going to say, if that KOs, I actually feel bad for him. Oh, that was a bit of a dunk. Anyway, the game, it didn't show off too much. But at the same time, you know, it was some diamond gameplay. Diamond v. Diamond. And I hope it helped a little bit. I mean, I have a lot of guides, which I, you know, have said a lot during this video. But they'll be up on the screen now in the top right. It should pop up if I remember to edit properly. And uh, <laughs> uh, it'll be on that end card too. Um, if you actually want to listen to my beautiful outro song. But... I'll see you lot in the next one. I hope you learned something. I hope it helped a little bit. You know, subscribe if you're not already. And uh, like the video too if you enjoyed or if it helped. Anything like that. But I'll see you lot in the next one. Peace. Have a good rest of your day, actually. I, well, how did I forget to say that? Anyway. Yeah. Bye. <laughs>